Greetings, unsettled souls! Yeah. Welcome to the Correct Views, friends. Sam I beat again, G. Hello, HF. Hello, live stream on the Media Speaks. Hey guys, well, we have a lot to get to today. Uh, the first thing I want to get to, and again, if you want to get straight to the news, skip ahead. I'll have this over in five minutes. But I think it's worth saying, because it involves me thanking all of you guys. All of you. Even the ones that hate me. You still clicked. Um, listen. I could share it on InfoWars. <laughs> Uh, my article on Teddy Stick about um, telling pregnant women that they should not drink when pregnant. Again, if your doctor doesn't tell you to do it, I'm telling you it's a bad idea. It got picked up by InfoWars. It was shared and seen by many people, and um, it was a huge help, something I wanted to do for a very long time. So I humbly thank all of you for having uh, cared enough about this show and the things I write, and the things I post enough to make that happen. Which leads me to needing to shut the hell up and give you why you tuned in. In other words, not to hear me on InfoWars. But hey, it was nice, and I wanted to mention it. All jokes aside, thank you, Rob Do. Check this out, friends. And uh, again, HDEF, you can see it here on the cam. Leaked chat logs purport to show deep state planting anti-Trump stories with the media. Now, I've been covering this a lot on Teddy Stick. I'm not going to go over and read my own articles here. I tend to hate when hosts do that. But by all means, go and uh, search my name, search Maxine Waters. You'll see that we talk about how the entire narrative is falling apart for the Democrats. And all of them that think that there's going to be some kind of um, impeachment happening because there was collusion between Russia and the U.S. Listen, there was no collusion. Sorry, snowflakes. There was no confusion whatsoever, or collusion, I should say, between Russia and Trump. Nobody who was going to vote <clears throat> against Clinton was swayed one way or the other, nor vice versa. There were no Trump supporters who were ever going to vote for Hillary Clinton. They were either going to vote third party, not vote, or vote for Trump. Okay, that's the first and foremost. Second of all, do you realize <clears throat> that the former CIA director, Mr. Brennan, when asked <clears throat> by, excuse me, Ted Gotti, if there was proof of any collusion between the United States and Russia, you know what they found? They found the golden goose egg, friends. The big nothing is what they found. Zero. There's none. Do you realize that even Maxine Waters, when pushed, there's video of it, look it up. She said there is no evidence of Russian collusion. Isn't that interesting? Because the Democrats had said that they seen this evidence. Well, Gowdy said he wanted to see the evidence that they saw, but they didn't have any to produce. Well, imagine that, liberals. Let's check this out. Uh, images purportedly circulating on the dark web to show unidentified individuals alleged to be members of the intelligence community scheming on how to plant stories with the media to embarrass President Trump. What, you mean an agenda? You mean somebody that would spread stories right after he's elected, like he did something with a Russian prostitute or with urination that cheated on his wife? You must mean that kind of slander, right? No, never. The Democrats would never do that. The chat logs taken from Glyph, an encrypted secure messaging service, purport to show a conversation held between approximately five individuals in the United States intelligence community on Wednesday. Well, if this got out, I wouldn't trust Glyph very much. I call it a hunch. Um, it was from 2.31 p.m. to 3.15 p.m. Or, uh, this is according to the Third Estate News Group. InfoWars, it says, who uh, wrote this, cannot independently verify that the chat logs are genuine. They could have been mocked up. We are not asserting that they are authentic, although this story is now circulating and is worthy of discussion given the content of the messages. The messages were leaked by an individual by the name of Fresh Camel, 
who posted them on the dark web message boards on Wednesday night. He claims to have access assessed the high-level FBI employee's computer on April 24th, so I guess it wasn't Glyph's fault, via classified phishing email that installed spyware into his computer. Um, and listen to this. RR is taking shit, and he knows our friends are have stuff on him. I'm hearing Moeller maybe <clears throat> by the end of the week. Hearing that, too, White House will be blindsided. Let me, let's put the MF back in the news. Can have F's draw memo on Turkey with Ergun thugs beating protesters in streets. It fits the news cycles, and I'm sure we'll, fi we'll need a few more memos down the road. Good practice. Look at these. You can see them on the screen. Look at this. This is all them spelling out what they were going to do in order to slander Trump in order to make his presidency ineffective or maybe to get him out, to get Pence in who they think is going to be more uh, easily molded to their new world order agenda. The chat mentions R.R. and Mueller, a clear reference to the Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein, naming former FBI Director Robert Mueller as a special prosecutor to head up the investigation into collusion between Trump and Arusha. This, friends, is... I mean, what else do you need to know? You could say that this isn't true. All right, well, if it isn't true, then why is this dated back on the 19th and it still lines up to everything that's happening? You think at this point they would have pulled the plug from the tub and gone to a different plan if it wasn't the case. Why wouldn't you do that? Well, because you'd be too, entrenched, and too deeply entrenched into it to be able to pull it off, that's why. Friends, uh, we got this too. Independent. This is bad. ISIS chemical weapons on human guinea pigs. Secret documents reveal. Now, this is enough to make you want to kick a kitten through a house fan. My PETA plug for the day. It's a joke. Um, ISIS are conducting chemical weapons experiments on human guinea pigs before launching attacks on Western targets, according to secret documents. The extremist group has reportedly poisoned prisoners by spiking their food with water, and water, excuse me, with compounds used in pesticides that are easy to obtain. Security forces now fear that the terror network may hatch a twisted plot to contaminate Western food supplies with formulas that quickly dissolve in liquids. Now, at first glance, I wasn't going to do this because I thought, oh my god, they've been reduced to playing with pesticides. But if you do a little research on it, if you can manipulate the process, and if you can get it to tangibly, uh, if you can find a way to make it in a, enough amounts that you can actually get it to where the water supply is, a basic knowledge of chemical processes, which can be obtained by doing something like this, is uh, unfortunately enough to create Maybe not the kind of death that they're, that they, that they're going to claim, of course, but certainly more that would make us comfortable. HDEF over there, let me make sure uh, when this is published if you can see the screen properly. If not, we're going to have to change this studio. Low def, it doesn't affect you. The experiments were recorded in a stash of papers found hidden in Mosul University after Iraqi special forces recaptured the city from ISIS fighters. They reveal, one, they reveal one victim was fed thallium sulfate, a colorless, tasteless salt that can be dissolved in water and began to suffer fever, nausea, and swelling of the stomach and brain before dying in agony ten days later. In other words, if they can do it to a couple people on a small scale, then they can do it to a, a town or a city or something like that on a much larger scale. That, friends, is where we run into this being more than I originally thought it was when I had happened across it. ISIS described the chemical as an ideal lethal poison and claimed to be in possession of an ample amount of the solution to fill demands, according to documents which were verified by British and U.S. forces later obtained by the Times. Now, the trouble with this oftentimes is and feel free to get a hold of me at a deplorable Deganji. I have it open here on Twitter. The, the overreaching problem here with this is that <clears throat> regardless of which side it is, if someone bombs the area that they have this 
stored in, and this sends it into the environment and kills God only knows how many people. Well, that's the kind of thing that a lot of people have said they've been doing to Assad. Assad has long said that he was not responsible for the violence and uh, chemical weapons attacks that we've seen, and yet we know openly that he was blamed for them. And uh, here we have uh, ISIS again talking about storing mass amounts of this, and it's worrisome because they're testing it on human beings exactly like the Nazis did. They're no better than Joseph Mengele, who we've covered on this show quite frequently. Terrorists also <clears throat> says injected a nicotine-based compound said to have no anecdote into another victim who passed out within seconds and died hours later. I guess he was luckier. Ingredients for the poison are contained in cigarettes and vaping supplies, while thallium sulfate is available for sale in many countries, including the U.S. So again, I mean, there are things that we can do. We know that the government now is going to be watching um, the shipments of that particular thallium sulfate compound rather closely. But nothing is foolproof. I mean, you would need a lot of it. I'm sure you can't just get this out of your local vape pen. <coughs> The chemical weapons report also contained recipes and guides for producing toxic nicotine compound. And uh, it goes on, but these are the ones that they're working on mostly here. And, um, you have to remember that Kim Jong-un in North Korea did not achieve uh, nuclear weapon status for his country overnight. It wasn't something that just he hoped for one day, and then it was miraculously the case. Unfortunately, it was trial and error and trial and error where chemical weapons, especially those that are dispersed as a dirty bomb would be, are orders of magnitude easier to produce than nuclear weapons. So you can see rather quickly exact where this is headed and uh, why we've made it part of the correct views. Guys, I got another one before the commercial break here. WikiLeaks, uh, CIA espionage orders for the 2012 French presidential election. <clears throat> now, I'm not going to say that uh, Le Pen was cheated because there's no proof that she was. But let's look at some of these from 2012. Um, all major French political parties were targeted for infiltration by the CIA's human, human and electronic signet spies in seven months leading up to France's 2012 presidential election. The revelations are contained within three CIA tasking orders published today by WikiLeaks as context for its forthcoming CIA Vault Seven series, named specifically for targets of the French Socialist Party, the National Front, the Union for Popular Movement, together with current President Francois Hollande and President Nicolas Sarkozy. Of course, this is 2012. And I bring this to light because we were told uh, on the run-up to the election, how many times did we hear that there was no voting fraud in free countries, that all of this was some kind of conspiracy theory. And we look, and now we, we, we can go back to 2012 and see exactly where this was uh, part of the plan. Significantly, two CIA opposition, opposition espionage tasks. What policies do they promote to help boost France's economic growth, growth prospects, and what are their opinions of the German model of export-led growth? Um, in infiltrating everything about the elections to have greater control over their outcome. The exact same things that they're accusing Mr. Donald Trump of today. And friends, that brings us right here to the middle of the show. The uh, two stories to get to. It's the part of the story where I remind you how unbelievably important it is to stay at the Seacrest Motel. Not just because they're awesome to me and Christelle and uh, change transportations, Kenny, but because they're a great hotel by one of the best amusement parks in the world. See the point? Uh, you're probably going to go up to Sandusky for the races or for the Mi Amusement Park. Make sure when you do that you stay at the Seacrest Motel because you'll be saving a lot of money and you'll be delighted that you did. And listen to this, if you mention that you heard about it on the correct views, 
you're going to get an even bigger discount because you're a listener of the show. They're, they're, they're nice to thinking people there. What can I say? All right, guys, got two stories to get to, and uh, this one here is brought to you by Change Transportation. Don't call Uber, don't call Lyft. Unless you want ripped off, call Change Transportation and let them know. Come on, say it with me. Let them know that you've listened and do listen to the correct views. You hit subscribe, you hit share, and you heard that Ridley Scott said aliens exist and they will come for us. Well, I can tell you this, Ridley Scott. I wish some aliens had come for the last Alien Resurrection movie. It looks good. It really does. But they tried to cram way too much in. That's the only way to put it. They tried to cram way too much in. And I don't know. I don't like the fact that the alien comes out as a full-grown alien now. The chest buster's gone. I know it's a prequel. It's leading up to it. It's just not. It's just a very not bad film. I don't want to give any spoilers away. I mean, everything I've told you, you've seen in Prometheus. But do make sure you go to my site uh, on Blasting News, and you'll be able to see the um, the article that I wrote about it. Let me know what your opinion is. Film director Ridley Scott has revealed that he is convinced that aliens are really out there and one day they will come for us. The veteran filmmaker is preparing to release the sixth film in the alien sci-fi horror series Alien Covenant. Uh, he did, and it was, like I said, eh. He said, I believe in superior beings. I think it is certainly likely. Well, I agree with him there. An expert is talking at the NASA and said to me, have you ever looked into the sky at night? You mean to tell me we are it? That's ridiculous. The experts have now put the number on it as having addressed what is out there. They say that there are between 100 to 200 entities that could be have a similar evolution to us right now. So when you see a big thing in the sky, run for it, because they are a lot smarter than we are. And if you are stupid enough to challenge them, you will be taken out in three seconds. Now, Scott, who's 79, looks amazing for 79, I might add. Um, he's 79 years old. And, of course, is known for the alien, la, 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 la. He says, but he, um, everybody was half underneath the seat watching the time you get the kitchen scene. But he said, there's a problem. I tend to close down and to be clam. You want to walk in the morning and film 600 people running around. So they quickly go back into the discussion of the movie and the fake aspects of it. So you're saying, all right, Sam, why did I just sit through that? I'll tell you why. While I do believe in aliens, let me, let me put something out there. There was no point in that article other than to, to promote his movie, which that's probably the primary thing. But promoting, promoting it as a real alien story. It wasn't about getting you to believe that Chessbusters was real. They want you to believe that aliens are real at every stop, if for nothing else, so that you don't listen to any of the other stories that I promoted. Just that there's some aliens, and Ridley Scott said he believes in them, and then they give you numbers that we already know that scientists said could be. I'm a firm believer that there are aliens, but when they come, I'm going to be very, very much questioning whether or not they're aliens, or our government, or another government, or whatever, the great puppet masters of the human race. I won't believe that they're aliens until there's some serious proof, because I feel as though, while I do believe that aliens exist, I don't. I think it's very convenient that they would come now and there's suddenly this great welcoming in all the newspapers and uh, all the magazines. I'm sorry, I just simply do not buy it. It is that simple. The last story of the day, friends. You know what it is. <laughs> Dumb deal of the day. The dumb deal of the day, of course, are brought to you by Chain Transportation and the Seacrest Motel in Sandusky. Now, if you're going to have a dog meat festival, well, I'm not particularly in favor of eating Fido or Old Yeller. I eat cow. A little bit too much of it. I'm going on a diet. I want you guys to keep me accountable. Um... I, I, why is a dog better than a cow? I mean, and personally, yeah, I don't have a pet cow. But I'm just saying. They're conscious beings. I, I don't want to necessarily eat Fi-Fi, Fifi. But I don't care if you do. It doesn't matter to me one way or the other. 
but I'd rather you didn't. But if you're going to have a dog meat festival, and people have protested your dog meat festival, then when the festival comes around and you decide not to serve dog meat, wouldn't it be prudent to change the name of the festival? Well, according to some people, you would think so, but no, that is not the case in China. <laughs> These are the people that uh, want to take over the world. <clears throat> Dailymail.co.uk Dog meat to be banned at China's annual Yulin Festival after activists complained, campaigned to end the trade that sees millions of animals stolen and slaughtered each year. Now, let me ask you a question. Anybody who's ever seen an area that is overrun by stray dogs, or anybody who's ever, when I was in high school, I did a, uh, they said if you did community service of any kind at all, you would get, like, your automatic grade went up one. So I did a, uh, uh, the Humane Society when I was in high school back in the Dark Ages. And you want to know something? There are a lot of dogs all over the place that don't have homes. So why would you have to steal the dog? You know what I'm saying? Or, uh, it, there's so many dumdies to go around in today's dumdie of the day that you almost don't know where to begin. Dog meat will be banned at the National Chinese Dog Meat Festival after activists campaigned to stop the millions of animals from being stolen and bludgeoned to death each year. Now, they do this to the snakes, too. There's a documentary on YouTube. If you don't want to sleep at night, go ahead and watch it. Um, they peel the skin off the snakes while they're alive. Now look, I'm not one of these PETA people. I don't care if you have a snake skin whatever. Do kill the snake properly, quickly, thoroughly, first. How about that? I don't know, maybe I'm just a raging heart liberal here. The government is said to prohibit restaurants, street vendors, and market traders from selling dog meat at the Barbaric Yulin Festival. It is believed the ban will come into effect on June 15th, one week before the festival begins, and is strictly enforced by fines of 100,000 yen and risk of arrest. Millions of helpless cats will be transported to the festival to be brutally slaughtered in front of each other and sold for their meat alongside other types of meat. Now look. I'm not in favor of feeding Fido to anybody, nor am I in favor of eating Morris the Cat or Jonesy from Alien to stay with the theme. But if an animal is killed humanely, then an animal is killed humanely. If an animal is butchered, slaughtered, animals that have a certain level of consciousness that see other animals slaughtered in front of it, I wouldn't want that done to cows either. But suffice it to say, there was enough dumdies of the day, all in one dumdie there, that you've got your money's worth. Friends, you're listening to the correct views. Thank you for doing so. I'm Sam I. B. DeGangie, and you can donate to my show at thecorrectviews.hotmail.com. You want to know what? Most people hearing this right now won't do it. And that's a shame. Because that's the only way we make money from it. It's the only way we can keep things going. Got two cameras going again now. We didn't have that blessing for ages. And uh, you can donate by going to the correct views at hotmail.com. Go to PayPal. Every penny you give to us goes towards a better show. YouTube has clamped down on all of us doing these shows. They don't let us monetize them anymore. So that means we count on you. And I would greatly appreciate it if you enjoy the work that I do, if you would donate to it. Good night, friends. God bless. And thank you very much for listening to the correct views. Hitting share, hitting like, and hitting subscribe matter more than you'll ever know.